Welcome to the Jewelry Resellers Podcast, your go-to source for all things shiny, sparkly, and of course, profitable. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'll be your guide on this dazzling journey through the world of reselling jewelry. We'll be diving deep into the art and science of reselling, uncovering valuable tips, insider secrets, and sharing stories from successful jewelry resellers. We'll explore market trends, industry news, and even discuss how to find those hidden gems just waiting to be discovered in thrift stores, estate sales, and beyond. So if you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a hustle, or if you're a seasoned pro looking to stay at the top of your jewelry reselling game, join me each week for insights, stories, and more on the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. My name is Desiree and I am your jewelry reselling bestie. And today we are going to talk about how to expand, diversify your income as a jewelry reseller. Because if you are a reseller in any way, shape or form, you know and understand that our income can sometimes be very inconsistent. Even if you're doing everything right, you can't really predict how everything will flow and you can't always predict how much money you're going to make. So one of the things that I have done in order to really not have all my eggs in one basket, so to speak, is to create multiple sources or multiple streams of income and I want to encourage you to start thinking about that as a jewelry reseller. Now, the things I'm going to share with you today are jewelry related. Not all of them have to do necessarily with reselling, but if you're already fully embraced or fully invested in jewelry, then some of these things will be just a nice addition to maybe somehow expand upon or maybe to offer in what you're, you know, what you're currently doing. And it could bring in some more money for you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we get started, I always like to remind you to join our newsletter family. All you have to do is go to our website, that's jewelryresellerspodcast.com. And I'm going to send you a list of the 20 best-selling vintage jewelry brands that all resellers should know. Yes, when you join the newsletter, I will send you a link to download that list for free. Again, all you have to do is go to the website, and that is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. You can also click on a link in the show notes and in the description of this YouTube video if you are listening on YouTube. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about how to diversify your income as a jewelry reseller. So the list I'm gonna share with you today is basically just ideas to get your mind thinking. Now you don't have to do all of these or you don't have to do any of these, but it's always good to kind of kick around ideas because you may get to the point, and I have been, been at this point in my own personal jewelry reselling journey where, you know, you feel a little burnt out or you just want to maybe take a little break or maybe you just want to do something different. Okay. And you don't want to like cut off doing anything jewelry related completely, but sometimes you just need to shift. All right. That's not necessarily stopping anything, but maybe just moving in a different direction. And that could be something temporary or it could be something permanent, you know, depending on where you are and what exactly it is that you're doing. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with this list. So the first thing I want you to think about when you are trying to diversify your income or to create multiple streams of income is to expand your product lines as it relates to the type of jewelry that you're selling. So if you are an everything jewelry reseller, then this may not necessarily apply to you. But if you focus on primarily vintage jewelry, then maybe you could consider more modern jewelry as well. Or if you sell mostly women's jewelry, maybe you might want to think about 
adding some men's pieces to your inventory as well. You know, so there's a lot of ways that you can do this. So again, this is just an idea. This is just something to think about. Um, you can also maybe consider consider selling fine jewelry or luxury jewelry if you don't already sell that. And again, this is going to take a little bit of knowledge, but I know some jewelry resellers that I've talked to have said that they eventually want to upgrade their business into more of the higher end luxury pieces. All right, but maybe you can add that in addition to the vintage pieces that you already sell. All right, so you wanna be able to cater to maybe different budgets by including a range of different materials or different types of, of jewelry, like I said. And that could be another way well, you don't have to do too much extra work in order to create more income or an additional stream of income even. All right. So that's number one, expand your product or your inventory lines. All right. Number two, and this could be kind of fun. And this is custom jewelry, pers personalization. Now, I know a lot of us don't make jewelry, but you can customize the experience your customers have by maybe offering some type of um, personal style or maybe being like a stylist in some way, or maybe you can get certain pieces engraved or customized or something like that, you know, or maybe somebody wants a piece that has certain gemstones or maybe has a specific design or engraving. And you can be like a personalized shopper and find those pieces for your customers. Now, again, this is just an idea. Whether or not uh, you have the ability to do something like this would depend, of course, on your own unique individual business. But I do want to throw the idea out there because some of you may be in a position to do this. And um, like... Like my dad used to do this. He didn't make jewelry, but he is an excellent woodworker and he would make these custom personalized jewelry boxes and he would, he would sell the boxes. I don't know what it's called. Like he would work with um, local jewelry stores. So, so a customer would come in a jewelry store. They want a, a custom jewelry box. The jewelry store then outsourced that to my dad and he made the custom jewelry box and then the jewelry store paid him and then the jewelry store then sold it to the customer. I don't know what that's called, outsourcing, I guess. <laughs> but that is something to think about. Maybe you know somebody that you can partner with and you can create, you know, custom jewelry boxes or jewelry bags even. All right, so there's a lot of ways that you can play with that. All right, number three, and I do know a woman who does this and she does jewelry repair and maintenance. So if someone has a beautiful vintage jewelry piece and uh, it breaks or a stone falls out or something happens, uh, this is her specialty. She specializes in repairing jewelry. And, you know, she doesn't do all types of jewelry, but she does do, you know, gold chains. And I think she does watches and stuff like that. But that's a great service or an additional stream of income, you know, if you have that skill or experience so you know someone who does um, and again this is not something that I'm saying you have to replace your jewelry reselling with but it's just another option for someone who may have the ability or know someone who has the ability to do this all right idea number four is jewelry rentals yes you can actually rent out your beautiful jewelry pieces to people who may only want to wear it for a special occasion um, i know this happens a lot on movie sets and you know photo shoots that type of thing so someone may only want the piece for a day or maybe a week or something like that so if you have a lot of high-end pieces or pieces that are, you know, very unique or, or maybe just something so different that somebody wants to use it in a movie or a TV show or something, uh, consider maybe doing some jewelry rentals and 
I'm not sure exactly how this would work. I would assume you would have to insure the piece and stuff like that. But you can offer a rental service for high-end jewelry, for weddings, for proms, and any other type of occasion. Okay, so that could be something that could be kind of fun. All right, idea number five is subscription boxes. And I have seen a couple of YouTubers do this where they create subscription boxes that deliver curated jewelry pieces to customers every single month. And I think it's Kristen D. Resale who does this. She has a subscription box where she sends six pieces of, I think it's signed vintage jewelry every month and you just pay a flat fee for her subscription box and she creates a curated box just for you and this is something that i have thought about doing although i'm not sure if i'm confident enough that i could get <laughs> get enough pieces and get you know enough high quality pieces to do that but i think it's a great idea and she does it herself and um, I've seen people do unboxing of unboxings of her subscription boxes, and it looks like she sends out really good stuff. You know, it's not junk. It's not, you know, something that is not nice. So that's another idea, uh, subscription boxes. All right, idea number six is wholesale or bulk lots. Now, this is something I have done off and on throughout my jewelry reselling. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to do this uh, right now with the mystery bags or craft lot bags that I'm, I'm currently putting together. And this is selling jewelry in bulk to other resellers or maybe even some businesses, you know, like people who are crafters, people who are upcyclers, or maybe other jewelry designers who like to take pieces and take them apart and then turn them into something else. Uh, could be people who do wedding planning because I know a lot of wedding planners like to use jewelry pieces in the um, decorating and in the displays and all that kind of stuff. So this is another option for you to make some more money selling your jewelry in bulk because people do love it and they do buy it and you can sell them in person or online. I did really well selling my uh, jewelry grab bags, bulk lot, craft lot bags in an antique mall and I could not keep them in stock. All right, idea number seven is online marketplaces. Now this is probably pretty much a given because all of us probably already sell online, you know, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, whatever. But maybe you might want to sell on another platform that you're not currently on. So if you're on eBay and Poshmark, maybe you might want to consider selling on Etsy. Maybe you sell on Etsy and eBay, and now you may want to think about selling on Facebook Marketplace. So think about other platforms that you could potentially use to sell more of your jewelry pieces. Now this could be where you sell certain pieces just on one platform and you don't cross post, or you can go ahead and cross post to multiple platforms. All right, idea number eight is to create your own website to sell your jewelry or jewelry accessories. All right, and again, this is something that I have been kicking around the idea with and, and really thinking long and hard if this is something I wanna do because of course it will take time to manage, to maintain the website, and then you're responsible for driving your own traffic to the website. But this is something I'm really thinking about doing because um, I, as much as I love selling on, on whatnot, Poshmark, whatever, I also really want to be able to sell the way I want to sell. And so I don't know. I know it's going to be some ad additional work, but I really want to kind of give my customers the experience of dealing with me directly through my own website. And I have had people ask me about this too, you know, because I do 
host this podcast, people say, oh, well, how can I, you know, buy from you directly, you know, without having to go through eBay or Poshmark or whatnot or something like that. So I may consider doing that. I probably won't have, you know, hundreds and hundreds hundreds of listings on there, but I will have a few, um, maybe some jewelry bags or something. I mean, I don't know. I still haven't figured it out. But this is an idea that I am currently thinking about and something that I am going to be working on in the coming months. All right, idea number nine is affiliate marketing. And if you're not doing some type of affiliate marketing, um, you really should. Now, if you're not familiar with what affiliate marketing is, it's when you partner with brands and they give you a special link. And then if someone buys the item using your link, you earn a commission on that sale. So I am an affiliate for Amazon. I'm also an affiliate for Etsy. I don't know if eBay still has their affiliate program, but even, you know, you don't have to only go to those uh, resale platforms to be an affiliate. Almost every company has an affiliate program. So if you uh, shop at Target, you can be an affiliate for Target. You can be an affiliate for Walmart. You can be an affiliate for uh, Macy's or Nordstrom, wherever you shop. <laughs> they they probably have an affiliate marketing program that you can join. And then if you're talking about a product, you know, on your social media or maybe when you're out and about, you can give people your link. And if they buy using your link, you will earn a percentage of the sales or the sale. Now, this probably won't be a lot, but there's some people who do make a full-time living doing this. So if you're going to be talking about something anyway, why not give people your referral link or your referral code so you can make a little bit of money as well. Okay. So affiliate marketing, sometimes they call it digital marketing, but basically it's when you partner with the brand and you get a commission if someone buys, buys that item or product using your link. Okay. All right, idea number 10 is one of my favorites, and that is content creation and monetization. All right, this is probably one of the things that brings me the most joy as it relates to what I do as a reseller, but also what I do as a podcaster, as a content creator. I just love social media. I love um, really engaging and being creative with some of the ideas and the information that I share. So this is a really good way for you to create a, a, a whole nother stream of income, right? You can start a blog, you can start a YouTube channel, uh, Instagram page, a TikTok page, and you can focus your content on jewelry because that's what I do. You can start a podcast like I did. You can, you know, talk about anything and everything jewelry related, or you can talk about anything reselling related, or you can talk about anything else. You can uh, share news or trends or tips or behind the scenes, you know, of your business or how you run your business. And then once you get this going, you can monetize your content through ads, through sponsorships, or partnerships in brand deals. And you can monetize through affiliate marketing like we talked about just before. So I know a lot of resellers do this. They are YouTubers, they are influencers, I guess. Um, and I think this is something that a lot of people are already familiar with and a lot of people enjoy doing. So if you like to share what you know with other people, or if you just like making videos or you're a really good writer and you wanna start a blog or something like that, or maybe you take some awesome photographs and you wanna share those beautiful pictures on Instagram or TikTok or wherever, you know, really think about creating content that you can monetize, all right? And that's another way that you can make additional money and not really have to do too much extra work. 
okay? Because basically you would just be documenting what you're already doing as it relates to your business. Okay, so the next idea I have is to offer classes and workshops. So education is a very um, lucrative business. You know, let's just, let's just be real. People want to learn how to do whatever it is they want to learn how to do. And if you have specialized knowledge or skill as it relates to something, in this case jewelry, but it doesn't have to be, um, you can create a, a class or, or host a workshop and you can charge people either in person or online and you can teach people whatever it is that you know, all right? And you can do a beginner's class, you know, let's say you're not the most knowledgeable person on the planet about something, that's okay because if someone's a beginner, you just need to know a little bit more than they do. All right, so I do have an online class myself, which is how to sell vintage jewelry online. And that is an online class that I uh, have on my website. And, you know, it, it brings in extra money for me if people sign up, All right? So think about what you know and what you could package into a course or into a class or into a workshop and then charge people to learn whatever it is. Okay, so idea number 12 is to what we are already doing and that's selling secondhand and vintage jewelry, but maybe taking taking it up to another another level in the sense of maybe you only sell certain types of pieces or maybe you only sell a particular brand or a particular style. You know, how can you up level what you're already doing? I guess is the best way to say it. Like figure out what you're doing already and then how can you do that better or how can you do that bigger or how can you do that at a at a higher level? All right. Now this may take some time for you to figure out. It may take some time for you to really kind of zone in on what your next level of genius is. But think about it because maybe you're playing small right now and you just don't know. Like maybe there is something you can do bigger, better, um, in a much more, um, I guess, bigger way. And you can charge for that in some way. All right. So, so try to Try to be creative when you, when you think about this, because sometimes ideas will come to you and you're like, wow, why didn't I do that sooner? Or why didn't I think of this earlier? Okay. Because you want to attract, maybe it's just a matter of attracting a different customer base, you know, and maybe you can have higher, higher margins as it relates to your pricing. If you attract customers, maybe who can spend a little more, or maybe who are looking for a little bit more. Um, higher level experience when they're shopping. Okay, let's continue on with idea number 13, and that is to bundle products. Now, I know a couple people who do this, and they seem to do really well. I know um, a girl on Whatnot, she does jewelry bundles, and people seem to love them. And it's a really good idea because you can not only move a lot of inventory, but you can charge more because you're giving obviously more than just selling one necklace or one set of earrings. All right, so you can create bundles of matching jewelry sets or complimentary items to increase the average sale price or the average order value. All right, so consider doing this too because this really isn't gonna take anything extra for you to incorporate bundling some of your items. Like maybe you have, you know, a whole set of a necklace, a bracelet, earrings, a ring, and you bundle it all together, right? And then your buyer gets a deal and also gets a whole set as opposed to just buying the pieces individually, all right? So that's something that you can do to increase your income. And I've seen people do this for special occasions, like they'll do Mother's Day bundles or they will do 
uh, Valentine's Day bundles or Christmas bundles and stuff like that. So you can come up with a theme as it relates to that as well. All right, idea number 14 is to collaborate. Now you can collaborate with another reseller, you can collaborate with an influencer, maybe some jewelry designers even. Um, you can even collaborate with places that host events. You know, think about who you can partner with and how you can create a partnership that is beneficial to you both because this will help both of you expand your reach and probably will expose you and your business to a whole new set of buyers that you probably would not have connected with any other way. So think about partnering with influencers to promote your jewelry or your, your jewelry reselling business, or maybe even partnering, like I said, with another reseller and you guys complement each other. So if you sell vintage jewelry, maybe you can partner with someone who sells vintage clothing because if they're going to buy a vintage outfit, then they're going to want some beautiful jewelry <laughs> to wear with that outfit. You know, things like that where you just got to be creative. And again, that would be a collaboration or a partnership that benefits both parties. All right, idea number 15 is to host a pop-up shop or a local in-person event. In-person sales can be a lot of fun, but they can also be a lot of work. But let's say you do one, I don't know, once a month. It could be another fun way for you to make some more money and to kind of take a break from only selling all of your jewelry online. You know, you'll be out and about meeting some new people, getting to talk with your customers face to face. And then there's always going to be those buyers who prefer to buy in person and you will be there to meet those people. All right. So consider maybe doing this. Sometimes you can do this on your own. Um, you can also do this with like, uh, what are they called? Like, like craft fairs or fall festivals, that kind of thing. I really enjoy going to those those things because they're like uh, these local open air markets and they're fun and you know everybody has a table set up and there's all kinds of stuff and you know I think those are a lot of fun now I've done my share and they are a good amount of work that's why I said you may not want to do them every week unless that's your business model but it is something to do maybe seasonally monthly or quarterly all right, so participate in local markets, fairs, and pop-up shops to reach customers um, who are local to you and, like I said, who prefer to buy in person. All right, idea number 16, and this is um, leveraging social media for direct sales. All right, now I'm sure we've all seen this. People like to sell their jewelry directly on social media instead of going through a, a online selling platform. So you can use Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube to sell directly to your subscribers or your followers. A lot of people do that in the jewelry community. As a matter of fact, I probably could go on YouTube right now and, and see <laughs> several uh, jewelry shows running live. I think more and more people are choosing to sell this way because, you know, they don't have to deal with the fees or all of the, you know, all the other stuff that comes along with selling like on eBay or Poshmark. But remember, it is a lot of work because you're going to have to do the invoicing and you're going to have to do everything else, right? You're going to have to get people into your show or get people onto your page. But a lot of people do it and a lot of people enjoy it. I think it's a fun way to do direct sales directly with your customers. All right, idea number 17 of how to diversify your income as a jewelry reseller is to offer financing, right? You can, you can 
provide your own type of layaway or financing for your buyers and for your customers. And I've seen this too. I've seen this on Instagram. There's a lady I follow and she sells a lot of high end pieces like hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. And she does the jewelry shows on Instagram and she lets people make payments. She lets people do like layaway or payment plans on her jewelry pieces. So the person will say, yes, I want that $500 necklace and I'd like to do the payment plan. And then the person will pay her a hundred dollars. I don't know, every week or every two weeks. And then once the item is paid off, she ships it out. All right. So if you are going to do a payment plan on a higher end jewelry piece, I do recommend that you charge a little bit more than what you're asking. So if you were asking $500, then I would charge probably $550 if someone wanted to do a a payment plan because you're the one um, taking on the inconvenience of having to wait for the money. Okay. But you don't have to, but if you do, I always recommend that you do charge just a little bit more and that is the cost of doing the payment plan or the layaway plan, okay? All right, idea number 18 is to do some type of limited edition or exclusive sales and promotions, right? So maybe with your best customers or your best buyers, you offer some type of special, that is only available to them, all right? Now, how is this gonna help you make more money? Well, because you're gonna do something that is very curated and very exclusive to that buyer, which means you will be able to charge a premium price for that particular exclusive. So this could be maybe, um, I don't know, first look at all of your brand new jewelry inventory and they get it at a discount if they buy it now right? Because this is going to save you money because you don't have to list it. You don't have to wait for it to sell, you know, and if you have, um, buyers who, you know, are looking for something specific, then of course you can definitely charge them for this exclusive look or this first peak or this first, uh, opportunity to purchase something from you before you make it public. All right. Um, let's see. Now, these last two ideas are, I don't know if they'll necessarily apply to everyone, but when I was doing my research, I was, um, I said, well, you know what, let me, let me throw it in there because it could be helpful to someone. And that is crowdfunding for expanding your business in some way, shape or form. Now, I'm not saying to do a GoFundMe or anything like that, although you could do that. But maybe you can um, pre-sell, and I've seen this happen too, you pre-sell jewelry boxes or jewelry items that you don't actually have yet, right? So let's say you're thinking about buying, um, I don't know, 100 pieces of rhinestone jewelry. Let's just say that. Well, you pre-sell those pieces before you actually order it and you pre-sell those, let's say at $10 a piece, right? And so when you get them in, you sell them, you know, and the person paid $10 and they get it. But if someone did not pre-order it or pre-buy it, then you're going to charge $20 a piece for those rhinestone jewelry pieces. Now this could be a little complicated, I don't know if that was confusing to some of you, but I have seen people do this where they do like an early bird and you can do this with jewelry too. You can do it with jewelry, right? You just say, Hey, I am going to, um, be getting in some new stuff. And if you'd like to get first dibs on it, then you tell me, you know, exactly how many pieces you may be interested in, or maybe you just give me like a deposit and you will, get first dibs on whatever I get. And then that deposit will be applied towards the purchase of the jewelry. Once you get it again, I know it sounds complicated, but when you're, when you have higher end jewelry pieces, uh, this is something that people do. All right. And sometimes people do want to have exclusivity on some of your jewelry. If it's really that good. 
right? So, so people will not have a problem saying, yes, here's my hundred dollars. I want first dibs on whatever you get in. And then that hundred dollars just goes towards whatever it is they buy. All right. So think about that. And if you get to that point, this could be something that allows you to make money before you actually have the inventory. All right. But again, it can be tricky and we want to make sure we're doing this honestly and, <laughs> you know, not, um, you know, misleading anybody. And not that I think that any of us would, but we just want to be careful. All right. So we set the expectation up front. All right. And my last idea is to implement some type of a loyalty program. Now, again, this is probably something, well, I guess you don't necessarily have to do this with your own website, but you want to reward your repeat buyers. You want to reward your repeat customers, right? So let's say um, Mary buys, you know, she buys from you every week or every month and maybe every fifth purchase of something, they get a 30% discount or they get a 50% discount or, or whatever, whatever. But you want to create some type of a loyalty program to encourage repeat purchases and to increase your customer retention. Okay, so this is something to think about because you want to make sure you have, you know, people coming back to you to buy, <laughs> right? We want that. We want to reward people for that good buying behavior. So think about how you can show some type of appreciation to your best customers to encourage them to continue being your best customers. Like I said, you can give them a discount. Maybe you give them one item free. If they buy six, they get to pick the seventh necklace for free. I don't know, whatever works for your business and whatever you think is going to make your customer happy as it relates to, you know, rewarding them for just being such amazing, awesome, awesome customers. Okay. So think about having a loyalty program of some sort. All right. So those are some ideas on how to diversify your income or how to expand your income or to create additional streams of income as a jewelry reseller. You can see that there's a lot of flexibility in what we do and how we do it. And I hope that these ideas really inspired you or motivated you to start thinking about how can I create more money doing what I'm already doing. In other words, you're not starting from scratch. You are just leveraging what you're already doing and what you already know and upgrading it in a way that you can make more money, okay? Because, you know, things are unpredictable and who doesn't want to have more streams of income, especially nowadays? So by implementing a mix of these strategies and ideas, you can definitely create multiple revenue streams. You can also attract a very diverse and loyal customer base, and you can build a more resilient and profitable jewelry reselling business. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope that, um, like I said, it just really inspires you to start thinking bigger and start thinking, you know, what, what else can I do to make, to make my business much more profitable than it already is. So I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to get your feedback on this. So leave me a comment and let me know what you think about these ideas. And, and are there some other ideas that I may have missed? I'd love to know uh, what your opinion is or what your input is. All right. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I'll check in with you again really soon.